Oh boy, still a work in progress, Matt Emerson. Uh, Practices and Tools for Wellbeing Part 2 coming up on this episode of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Yeah, I got a lot of work to do. How about you? Yeah, I think we can all use improvement, right? (laughs) Right? right. Uh, Today on Wandering's End, we're traveling to a place long, long time ago and a place far, far, far away. We're going to go experience the rise of the resistance attraction at Walt Disney's uh, Magic Kingdom. Is the force strong with this one? Let's talk Hmm. about it. Okay. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet us, episode 109. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Bryan, I'm looking forward to hearing the second part of how I can become, uh, my uh, my being can be become more well. Good stuff last week. I'm looking forward to the conversation. This well, week. we have we have a few more best practices and tools to share today in part two of the series on some things they do to, to help your overall well-being. But listen, the very much anticipated, you've been talking a lot about going to Disney to get on that new Star Wars attraction. I can't wait to hear what you think about it. Thumbs it's up or like, thumbs down. Yeah, better, and it's but. not even just about the attraction. I mean, we're gonna share uh, some tips and tricks on actually how to get into a boarding group to get on the attraction because it is a an experience. The whole thing, it's an experience from the moment you decide you're gonna go that morning until you actually get on that attraction. So we're gonna talk about all that today. All right, let's jump in and see what's happening in the Star Wars universe and uh, find a little set. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, welcome back. If you missed it in episode 108, I covered uh, several strategies and tools to help you with well-being, and we determined that Jan O'Brien is really out of balance with her her <laughs> inner self and is working on that. I'm happy to report I have started working on a few of these things, but I got a long road ahead of me, and I'm going to share a few more today. So let's dive into part two of Practices and Tools for Well-Being. And the first one up today is practice mindfulness and meditation. Now this one, I'm pretty good at staying on track with and yeah, jump sure. into. I, I, so I just want to remind everyone what we mean by me- mindfulness and, and, and versus meditation. And a lot of links in the show notes today, 109 at wondering but not lost, wbnlpodcast.com. Uh, we've actually got a download which has all the best apps that I recommend for as a resource guide, you can just click on it. It's a little PDF and it just to shout out what I think are really good ones out there. There's one called calm. Some of them require this one. There's some free stuff, but you really need to get the, the um, monthly subscription. Maybe it's like 10 bucks a month, or maybe you can buy it annually. That one is really great. It has continued to get better. They actually have some things in the calm app to help you go to sleep. Like it's called bedtime stories, like sleep stories. Like somebody's actually reading like for adults yeah. stories. I actually used some of that, but, and it did help me go back to sleep. And so I'm, I'm revisiting whether or not to use that calm. But I have other things that I like. I particularly like a set of meditations, guided meditations from Kelly Howell at BrainSync, brain, S-Y-N-C.com. I'm a huge fan of all her work. And that has a lot of science behind it. It's about this binaural beat in your head. And so there's this subliminal stuff that's happening that balances out your brain and uh, this uh, I love it. There's every anything that you want for a meditation from, you know, stopping smoking or dieting or, or weight loss to things to help you go to sleep to just great visualization and things like that. So anyway, there's a lot of great tools that are out there and they're over in the show notes for you. But the big thing here is meditation can be easy. A couple years ago, wrote a, wrote a post and, and, and to have a link to that on I think we even did it in the podcast, maybe initially in year one in our podcast about meditation for busy people. How you, it can mm. just be 10 minutes. You, it's not everybody thinks meditation and they think, mm, you know, I got to yeah. be a yogi. doesn't have to be that. There's so many things to help you. Another shout out that I'm going to have to add to the show notes. I just thought of it. 
is Insight Timer. Insight Timer is an awesome app to download that you can set up. I just want to do 10 minutes of breathing and it'll do some bells or chimes in there and that'll bring you out of it so that you can actually count on, you know, 10 minutes of uninterruption. You can play some music in the background. I've, I've enjoyed that in the past. Mindfulness is, is more, so that's actually, to me, meditation is more setting aside some time in the morning or throughout the day that you're, maybe it's the evening, whatever, that you're actually focusing on shutting down your mind a little bit and just simply trying to stop all the craziness that's in your head. Right. Where, where mindfulness is just going about your day to day and, and doing things with a mindful intention. It could be washing the dishes. It could be eating, just doing chores. It's just mindfulness means that you're hundred percent into what you're doing and you're being aware of it. And that's another way to calm yourself down. And most of us don't do that, right? We're, we're doing mm -hmm. some task and we're thinking of all the other things that we need to be doing oh, and we're always stressed. Right. So mindfulness and, and meditation can be very simple. And if you've not practiced it before, just jump into some simple ways. And we've got a lot of resources in the show notes for you. The next one is just, if you're not going to get into all of that and you're like, yeah, yeah, it's not into me. Oh, then why don't we just do something called, I'm calling just breathe. So I don't know if anybody uses an Apple watch. There is an amazing breathe, uh, breathe, uh, breathe app on your watch. And sometimes yep. it will, sometimes I think my watch is trying to tell me, you need to breathe because it'll just turn on, you know, it's like I'll weird. Click something. I know that happens to me too. I don't know what mm -hmm. triggers that because I don't, it doesn't come on at a certain time every day. It's just weird. No, I, I, well, I think it's just because of certain buttons, but then I'm, then again, I'm a little paranoid over the whole, <laughs> right. you know, uh, they're watching and hearing us. Uh, but you know what? I'm down for an app or something else with a new watch that would basically go, we're monitoring your heart rate, Jan O'Brien and your, right. your blood pressure. And, it's time for you to do a breathing routine and it's a one minute focus breathing. And what's cool about it on the Apple watch, do you ever use it? Yeah, is I do. That it, it, it'll just give you this thing. And this is actually the whole t tip throughout the day. You can just pause and take one minute of breathing. And if it doesn't automatically turn on because apparently mine tells me that I need to occasionally, <laughs> um, you, you click the button and it, it will just, it'll do that little, uh, movement the yeah, thing you get into the, the, the watch, cadence the cadence, the cadence the and you'll feel yeah. it on your wrist and you can breathe in and breathe out and it will do Pretty it cool. for one full minute ton of stuff i have in the show notes on other uh, really cool focus breathing that you can do remember andrew we uh, wheel while i think it's andrew while uh the the i think he was a surgeon general or something at one point remember him doc but anyway he's written yeah. tons of books he's got a famous four seven eight breath it's the relaxing breath and it's about uh, taking it, it, the whole thing is walking through a cycle of, of um, holding it, breathing in and breathing out and following this, this, this pace of four, seven, eight. There's a whole exercise in the show notes for you on that. So just breathing is an awesome thing to do throughout the day. And it instantly will get you focused because you're focusing on your breath and it will calm you down and it might help throughout the day if you're stressed. So if you're not into all that other coordinated meditation and so on and just try breathing that, that's a breathe. good one. we're breathing all the time this is just more about really focused breathing my next one is just about having smart goals in your life and i don't want to get into a whole thing on uh but i do believe that this really helps if you even if it's simple there in all areas of your life things that you're focused on I, i've gotten to uh practicing in, in my coaching not going crazy with tons of goals i almost feel like one thing you want to focus on in each of the key areas of your life is enough, right? But SMART goals just basically mean they're specific, they're simple, they're measurable and meaningful to you. They're as if, so you always state them as if uh, they've already occurred. Uh, so you're using the power of affirmations, which I have coming up in a moment. In all areas of your life, they're they're realistic for you and they have, they're toward what you want and there's a time frame around them. So that's uh, good old goals, uh, creating good, great goals in your life. Another great uh, practice and technique, if you haven't used it, is visualization. And I use this quite a bit. So create a visualization. I really learned a lot about this from Shakti Gwain. Shakti Gwain, um, she's got, I have a link to her uh, website. She wrote a couple great books on creative visualization and all the great tools that you can use in there from vision boards to just, there's so many things that you can do around this. And, and we're mostly all of us, not all of us, but the majority of us are visual and having a visualization. There's an area of a vision, a vision board 
is, is the idea of constantly seeing what it is you're creating in your life as a reinforcement. But creative visualization is more of a, of a technique that's a bit of a meditation where you can walk yourself through uh, picturing yourself exactly what it is that you're wanting to accomplish. And honestly, athletes use this. If you read any kind of, uh, I think a lot of uh, performers use this. They're using practices where they're seeing themselves in the position of an athlete going through the motions of winning the game or performing whatever it is they're doing. That's all visualization. It's the same thing we can do in our day-to-day lives around our goals. So there's some great stuff in here on creating digital vision boards uh, from creating something that you put on the, on, and I actually have this like on mine. This is, right. if you're watching it, this is a, besides the notifications that have popped up and I'm showing my phone, I have a picture of the, place in Florida that I would really like to get to. And I see it, I don't know, a hundred plus times a day. Right. Uh, Dunedin, Florida. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite spots and potential future retirement place. We shall see, but somehow that's in my future and I'm looking at it and I have it. And I have, I have things like that around my house. Do you use visualization at all? Do Always. You, do you, do you have things that, you know, just images or look at, look where, as we, if you're watching, we're looking at his studio, his home studio. That's home studio, and you got lots of things that are up there. Yeah, let me see if I could. Uh, wrong. Oh yeah, there. This way, I have a whole gi- giant board that. There's has to do with a, there's his, there is his huge vision board. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So what we do, uh, at, you know, because we do a lot of wandering, we always, if we have a big trip coming up, especially if it's a driving trip, we will put a map up of uh, where we're going to be going. Oh, wow. sometimes a year ahead of time, and we'll start, you know, getting a delay of the land and drawing the routes on the wall and stuff like that, putting up pictures of things that we're going to stay at, and when we make reservations putting our reservations there and pictures of the hotels or whatever bed and breakfast so yeah it uh, absolutely absolutely that, that and it is, you going. So, and something to look forward to and you're seeing that many and many all times the time. during the yeah. day and it's it's awesome so that really works so visualization and you can't talk about visualization without talking about the power of affirmations really big believer in this and this is just where you take your goals or your even if you're not into the word goals affirmations are powerful and I feel like we're using affirmations all the time. And unfortunately, sometimes they're negative. It's the things that we're saying, we might be saying out loud, we may be bringing ourselves down. And, and the thing is to change that into just a few tips on the way affirmations need to be. They're statements of belief, right? They're, they could be internal or external. They could be positive or negative. As I just said that, you know, it, it's going to affirm, you want to affirm and declare your success or failure with the power of the words that you're saying, even if they're inside your head. Uh, it's really powerful, the power of, 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 of our, our words, the words that we choose to use with others and with ourselves. So they can really become self-fulfilling prophecies. They can come true because especially if you say them often enough. And, and, and I just want to again, focus on the fact that you're doing this naturally anyway, and just have this awareness of whether or not you're affirming what you are wanting to create in your life, as opposed to what is negative, what's holding you back right now. That's our tendency as human beings. We have, I mean, just go through the studies on this. Most of us are constantly talking about to ourselves and others, what's not right. And man, I I have been in that space a lot recently. And I'm realizing that while I'm just creating more of that by yeah. staying focused on things that are stressing me out or just the pace of things and so on. So it is a very concerted effort to get back to reaffirming the positive. So you turn your goals into affirmations. A couple ideas are they're always in first person present tense. I am, I do, I have, uh, not, I want, I will someday. Maybe this is going to come true. Be so intentional and be so forceful in the statement of your I am, I do, I have, and insert what that is. And a couple ideas here to practice it daily. Tape it up onto your mirror as you're in the morning doing your morning routine, brushing your teeth. Write it on your mirror. Whatever those statements are, say them all the time. Uh, Years ago, and I haven't done this in a while, record it in your own voice, and it could be part of your morning routine where you're hearing yourself say them or just frankly just read them every single day. Read them every day and, and write them out. Uh, actually, for those of you that are real estate agents, we wrote something quite a while ago that are just real estate affirmations. You may find some things that are interesting in there. That's a download in the show notes today. All right, here's the next one. Keep a journal. You're not really a journaler, right, Matt? Not a journaler. 
Uh, I, you know what? I wish I would. There was a guy sitting on the plane with me, uh, by me uh, when I came back from Vegas that uh, wrote the entire time that we were on that plane. It was really, really, really it was really interesting. <laughs> I kind of envy that, but I just can't get myself to do it. I've tried many times. Uh, you have you have bought me plenty. I have a lot of uh, blank journal books. Because, yeah, so you know, do I, actually. I <laughs> but, like to collect uh, them. I'm a collector well, of journaling, right, uh, yeah. journal books. And honestly, uh, I'm reorganizing and re getting rid of decluttering and, and packing and unpacking and so forth. And I came across an entire box of journals and I'm not going to throw them away of just journals. And there's many journals I have several pages are written in and I've gone back and read the things that I've written, very cathartic, very powerful to, to see some of the things of where I've come. And then mostly in that box, Matt, Blank journals. Yeah. <laughs> so you if you need a journal, I'm here for yeah, it. I know, me too. Yeah, <laughs> we should do a giveaway. Um, it's it's funny that my I, my grandmother wasn't really a journaler, but when we went on vacation, she would keep a journal of our entire trip, and I love to look back on those for a lot of reasons. One, you know, gas was literally twenty cents a gallon, um, but she would write where we stayed and you know a little little snippet about you know. Uh, the, the you know the food we ate and the places we went and stuff like that and I continue continue to do that for years uh, when Laura and I were first married when we go on vacations we would always do that as well and they're just and we don't do it anymore and once again I I regret not doing that because it take a lot of time every night to kind of recap your day and it is really fascinating to go back and look at some of the places that you've been and, you and what it was like you really don't do it on some level because you're you for as long as we've been doing this podcast and I've known you you share all this great stuff in your wondering but not lost.com podcast and right. so where are you creating that you're researching some things but to create your own experience that is in, in a way i have to say your blog is I know, actually, your journal i was just going to say that, that journal, there is right? a lot of that actually that's a really good point it's a it, that's a really good point i don't do it on a daily basis but i certainly do um you know you know, share experiences and things like that, or capture memories from experiences. So yeah, yeah. So I guess well, I am kind of a partial journaler. And maybe some of us aren't into the good, the cool pen and the great pen and a great journal and writing in it. But I feel like that is another outlet. Maybe what we're posting some of us on social media could be looked back at as part of your journal. Yeah. We are all recording our up highs and lows and so forth, right? It is fun to look so, back and reflect. Hmm. I'm telling yeah. you, you really can. You can glean a lot out of that. And honestly, the other thing that's super cool about about all of that is uh, when you, to your point on Facebook, is because you're you're keeping a timeline in a journal, even on Facebook, it's the memories that pop up. Seven yeah. years ago, this is what you did, and so so in a way that is a little bit of a cathartic experience of what we're doing. But anyway, journaling, if you do it a little bit more intentionally, some people find that uh, as a way to help them with their mental health or well being. All right, uh, two more here. Next one is just ask for help. Ask for help can be anything from going to seriously, finding a therapist, a, a counselor, talking to someone, just having an accountability partner, joining or forming a mastermind. I actually have a guest speaker that we're, we're, gonna, we're going to book, Matt, that uh, just remember that as I said that, that has had a mastermind group uh, for, God, probably like 10 years with, the, uh, with, with a small group of real estate agents. He's had one or two people, you might have one person who's, or, or he might be the original person, but people have cycled through and he's been the, the guy that has done this and it's been so powerful for them to have this mastermind group where they they, we, they used to meet maybe twice a month, maybe they're meeting once a month. Anyway, he'll come, he'll come on and talk about it. So it can be anything from that to uh, hiring a coach or getting an accountability partner, but, but collaborating and not trying to do everything by yourself. Right. Uh, joining some group. You know, so there's ask for help. And the last one I say, the, la the best for last, and it is a WBNL coaching, Matt Emerson, I think coined this phrase and it's get up and get out. We say it every time on the podcast. So we really, when we put together our, our coaching company and our programs, we did it with this mindset of a balance between also, we focus on real estate because that's our background, real estate skills and tips, but always balancing it with the idea of getting up and getting out. And boy, I really need to do a little bit more of this. So I want to end on this today because it's uh, I was doing really well with taking time off and even just on the weekends, getting out and going exploring things that are in the area. Because I don't know about you, but it's certainly I know it. I, I do know about you. It does re-energize you. You, you really find you guys find a lot of 
makes yourself, even if you go, you get busy, maybe Laura's busy with things for school. It's about making the time to just go out and do a little trip. Like you've been talking about to, uh, going down Route 66, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, we really have made a commitment this year because we've gotten out of the habit of doing it to actually try to do something every Saturday, to get up every Saturday and go do something, even if it's something close, you know, right around here, just to get up and out of the house. So clearly you're going to schedule vacations, hopefully, but we're talking about how to integrate this into your day-to-day -day life. Uh, so some ideas are just to get up and move your body. Uh, I enjoy yoga and I'm, I've been feeling a lot of craving to get back to yoga and I probably really need to do some kind of organized uh, back to a class where I'll go and I like it when I'm around people that are doing and that always works for me. Walking meditations. Um, how about just watching a sunset or a sunrise? Honestly, okay. we see some of the most, the West Coast, you have beautiful sunrises and sunsets. We do out here in Vegas as well. And I will tell you that when I'm able to catch those or I purposely look for that, I'll sometimes snap a picture because they are breathtaking. It makes you pause and stop just in just being in that time. So right. connecting with nature, going for a hike, you know, scheduling more small little respites in the day, having some fun. And again, if you need some ideas on places to go, then you got to go over to Matt's blog at wanderingbutnotlost.com. There is a plethora of places. Just use the search bar, right? He's got it organized in categories sure. and national parks to, to, to parks, theme parks like Disney and others, Universal, to cities that you've traveled to. You always get some great tips and some ways to get kind of off the road less traveled. Uh, anything right. to add to that, Mr. Emerson? No, it just really is important. It, it, it really it grounds you, it centers you, and it really, um, it really enriches your life. Plus, you build memories, and I think that's one of the best parts of it. All right, there you have it, folks. Uh, in episode 108 and 109, we went through, I don't even know how many it was, uh, maybe 16 or so, various tactics, strategies, tools, ideas. You certainly don't need to do them all. As always, I always I have a tendency to give too much information, but the idea is always, it's not about too much information, it's about find what works for you and implement one or two of these ideas into your daily life and hopefully that will help you come into a little bit more alignment and balance uh, so find out what resonates with you and we'd love to hear back if anybody has any notes uh, things to share something that they've done or results of getting more intentional about being in better health good stuff come take my hand and see the world around you the time is right just let the light surround you the best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wandering Zen, we are going to the happiest place on Earth, Disneyland Park here in California, to experience the new attraction in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, Rise of the Resistance. I can say right up front, before we even get started here, that I am not going to give you any spoilers. We're not going to be talking about every minute of that ride, because I know that a lot of people, first of all, most people have probably gone online and actually seen the videos from that ride, if you're a Star Wars fan anyway, uh, a thousand times. I did that. I don't need to wait till I, you know, to see something fresh with fresh eyes my sweet pea and i went this last weekend she actually was quite the opposite she wanted to know nothing about what was going on there <laughs> so which was actually really cool because i'm going to share my thoughts about what i think about the the attraction but it was really great because i had been completely uh aware of everything that was going to happen beforehand my wife Sheldon, are you moving the camera here? Our, our mascot, Sheldon Emerson, is um, on the desk here. So uh, he may make an appearance video. He probably will make an appearance. Anyway, and then she didn't know anything about it at all. So two very different experiences, you know, from a frame of mind of walking in and what you already knew. So uh, totally open to me. No preconceived idea of even what was going to even happen from her. So uh, which was cool to have that perspective. And there you go again. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey there, son, behave. Uh, anyway, if you are a Star Wars fan, a Disney fan, or even kind of fan adjacent, really, um, it would be hard to 
not know about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. It was a big deal uh, to anyone that was in those universes anyway. When Disney actually started obtaining the rights to Star Wars, you know, it was a kind of double-edged sword. People were worried about it in a lot of ways. Like, what was Disney going to do to the franchise? You know, were they going to go in and ruin it and change, you know, a lot of the original uh, mm -hmm. vision of what's going on? I think over the years, people have kind of accepted uh, Darth Vader and Boba Fett and Stormtroopers walking around in Tomorrowland. It's one of those things that over time, people have just kind of come, you know, used to. It was weird in the beginning, though. It was. Agree. It was totally weird. It was like Mickey Mouse and Darth Vader. This is a weird combination. Or Mickey and Minnie holding lightsabers. Very strange thing. But I, like I said, with with Star Tours, the attraction that was put into Tomorrowland back in 1987, if you can believe it. No. Um, uh, you know, it, it has just kind of become a part of the Disney canon. And I think that people have really kind of, they've, you know, they've lived with it. When it was announced that uh, Disney was going to build a, a land around Star Wars, I, I think once again, the, the fan, it, it, it created kind of fandomonium in a lot of ways, right? People were really, really excited about it. And then people were also very skeptical about it as well. So uh, interesting. And I, I think, you know, the, the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opened here in California back uh, last summer. Uh, it, it it didn't open to huge throngs of people like they anticipated. There's a lot of reasons for that. You, only one of their major attractions, the Millennium Falcon, opened with the land, the Rise of the Resistance attraction, because there were some construction delays and some technology delays didn't open until actually just in January of this year. Open in Walt Disney World in December. Uh, the the fan reaction's been really, really positive, and it certainly has brought a lot of people in. So, before we even talk about the ride experience itself, let's talk a little bit about how you actually can get on the ride because it really is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So Disney, I give them huge uh, thumbs up. The operations team figuring out a way that they were going to manage all the people that were going to be on this ride. Because so many times when a new ride will open up, like for example, Radiator Springs Racers over in um, uh, California Adventure, when that opened up, uh, whenever that was back in, gosh, it's been years now. One of my favorites. Yeah, it's great. It's a great attraction. You know, it still will have waits of an hour and a half, two hours, sometimes even more than that. You yeah. know, and that, that's a long wait. When it first opened, the line was crazy there. It would be like three hours long, you know, and, and Disney was trying to avoid that with this Galaxy's Edge because Star Wars obviously is a much larger franchise, much more intertwined in the, the, the fabric of most, most people across the globe, really, you know, because it's been around for 40 years. So um, they they decided to do what they are calling a boarding group system. So instead of just going into the park and there's lining up for the attraction, you actually go in and use the Disneyland app to join a boarding group. And then throughout the day, they'll call boarding groups to come over to get into the queue to stand in line for the ride. So the queue of the attraction is probably anywhere between 45 minutes, half hour, I mean, 45 minutes to an hour, maybe even a little bit longer. So they keep it contained to where it's not just a long old line of, of people from Galaxy's Edge all the way to the main gate of the park, which I think <laughs> is really, it's really smart. But what has happened in both Walt Disney World and here in California is that people want to get in and get in one of these boarding groups. And in order to get one currently, and this thing opened on January 17th, so we're now a little over a month in. And I've been reading obviously a lot about this because I wanted to make sure when we went last week we were going to be able to get on the get on the ride. Uh, you have to get to Disneyland early because it is packed in before the it opens early. It's crazy, you know. I, you know that people. I, I often wonder: Do children even go to school anymore? Because <laughs> I just don't even know. It's like cra it, it is wild. We uh, have been reading about it, and what you have to do to get a boarding group. You can't get one beforehand. It's like getting a fast pass. If you're familiar with that that whole process, you can do it on your phone. Uh, with if you have the app, you have to you know get in there and then join the boarding group. But what has happened? So many people are getting there early. The the app will the boarding group queue, for lack of a better word, will open up at right at park opening. So this last Saturday when we went, it was eight o'clock in the morning. So you have to be in the park before eight. So you can be ready on the app to go there. And there are literally thousands of other people that are there doing exactly the wow. same. Wow. It is absolutely crazy and really kind of exciting and fun at the same time because there's an energy about it, right? You want to get on an early boarding group. You want to be able to get one at all because there are some people that get aced out altogether. All uh, so let me just tell you the process of what you need to do. And the, all of this, all of these instructions are at the show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com or wanderingbutnotlost.com. So before you go, 
Pro tip, you have got to download the Disney Let. These are things you need to prepare for before you get there because you don't want to be doing it while you're there waiting. <laughs> um, you download the Disney Let app, make sure you have that in there. You, you get your account going, you load all the information you need into your account. If you're going with multiple people, one person should be designated as the person that's going to get the boarding group. Uh, it's just easier that way. And in order to do that, you have to make sure that everyone else's tickets that you're there with are linked to your account. Super easy to do that on the app. Hmm. Not, a, not an issue. That way you have you are making your boarding group with everybody in your party. Everybody's not doing it on their own. Because if you do it on your own, there's a chance that one person get, can get boarding group 22 and someone can get boarding group 80. You know what I mean? You can't go together. So make sure that everyone in your party is on one person's app and they are in charge which I don't know if I want the responsibility of being that person in your group, but that's the person that's in charge for getting good your board. pro tip. It is a good, it really is a good pro tip and make sure that you, you do that. And, and, and if you have done this before and you have added someone to your app and they're not there that day, make sure that you don't have them checked because it's going to mess you up. You know what I mean? So you have to do a little pre-planning here to make sure that you're ready at, at park opening when that app becomes active to join that group that you're ready to go. So, okay, so here's the, the deal. You have to be in the park in order to do this. You can't be outside of the turnstile. You can't be in the California Adventure. You have to be in Disneyland Park prior to the park opening in order for you to get going on the app. When the- uh, How the do time you know that? If, if it's all done on the app. The ticket is scanned in and you, you're you the app- Oh, I got speak it. Whether or not you have been scanned into the got park. It. Meaning okay. you're physically there. Got it. Physically in the park. Now, you don't have to be all the way down at the end of the street ready to run to the attraction because that's not what this is about. This is about just getting in a boarding group. So you could literally have just walked in the main gate and not be anywhere else, right? And, and be able to get onto the app. So the app will become active. You go to a little place that says um, uh, it's on the, uh, right now, it's right on the home screen of the app, right underneath the map of the park. There's a place that talks about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. There's a little button that says, find out more. Click that. And you're going to go into the page for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. There's two buttons at the bottom of the app. One says my status. It's the first button on the left. And then the one next to it says join boarding group. That my status button, which is very easy to push because it's the first one. If I was going to design this, I would have designed it the other way around. But they um, you, you, you don't hit that button. That is not what you're trying to do. You are trying to solely join a boarding group. So keep your keep yourself focused on the join bo uh, boarding group button. When the time rolls around, in our case, it was eight o'clock. That little button becomes active. You see it light up punch that button, and then you will go through the steps. You, it walks you through, and it will assign you to a boarding group. Now, this is not first. I mean, it is a little bit first come, first served. I really think it's more of a lottery kind of situation, you know, where you yeah. just there are certain numbers out there, and you, you hit it. What is so cool about it is that literally at that point, everybody there that you're standing around is doing exactly the same thing. Talking about seeing people on their devices, right? It is like that. You're looking around and everyone is like just ready. They're, you know, it's fastest finger. They're there. So everyone's people. doing it at the same time. How many people of that day would you say were oh, there? There were thousands of people. Main Street was packed with people. And you were able to get a boarding group? Well, here's what happens. Oh so, gosh. and it's really interesting because I've read a lot of different things on It'd this. It'd be like you know? disappointing if it's like, sorry, we're full. It, you can. You can join the Disneyland uh, uh, Wi-Fi if you want to. I have found it to be very unreliable. So you, I just actually turned the Wi-Fi all the way off my phone because your app works on cellular. And to me, that it worked better. It works better because you don't want to okay. get stuck up where all of a sudden your Wi-Fi is not working. <laughs> and all, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm telling you, it is stressful. If you really, I mean, really seriously talking, uh, your well-being uh, steps were very good to either do before you go do Just this. Just breathe. Do a breathing time. exercise before you well, try to get a boarding group for this galaxy. Anyways, so you, right. The time comes, you hit the button, and it assigns you to a boarding group. And it, you can hear the collective uh, relief afterwards. There Sigh. are people screaming, and they're jumping up and down because they're so excited because they got in. You know, <laughs> I mean, it is, it is hysterical. I'm going to go back sometime and just film people doing it. Because oh my it God, is, I would love to see that. It, it really it. is cool to see, right? So we're sitting there waiting and it comes up. We're in boarding group 89. 
89 oh was our boarding wow. group. And we were at, uh, and I'll tell you about our experience of how we, you know, what we experienced before that, because now it's eight o'clock, right? 89. Now this is the way it has been working. Now this is going to change as time goes on, but right now they, they don't guarantee any, I mean, it could be five groups get in because there's been a lot of downtime on the trans uh, the uh, attraction. It's new, right? And there are things that happen. There's glitches and the ride goes down, uh, but they are, are, are averaging up to boarding group 81 every day. Uh, so you so don't what, even think you're going to, you, you might not even okay, get on. You know, are any boarding group at the current time, now this could change tomorrow, but as, as the time that we went, any boarding group over 81, it, it automatically tells you you are in a backup boarding group. Wow. Right? So we already knew that there was a chance that we weren't going to get on the attraction. And here it was eight o'clock in the morning, or there was a chance that we were going to get on the attraction until 1130 that night. You know what oh I mean? God. So it's like, what do you do uh, if that's really what you came there to? to ride. Now we're lucky. We live in the area. We could have just gone home. Now I've been watching the app for weeks now, just to kind of see what happens. And throughout the day, um, on, on many days, the, uh, the boarding groups got well into the hundreds. I think one day I got to 150. So I had, I told Sweepy, it's okay, here's our options. We're going to be able to get on this day. We're going to be able to get on this ride today, whether you know, we stay all day long or we go home and come back or whatever. It's going to be do. definitely in the but afternoon. We're going to be able to get on it, but it's definitely going to be late afternoon into the evening. You know, that was mm -hmm. my idea anyway before mm -hmm. we got on there. And you, 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 it, then you just have to make a decision what you're going to do. Now, it was awesome. What we did is we just, you know, because you're there at eight o'clock in the morning, we started getting fast passes, right? So we rode, I mean, we rode so many rides. We rode more rides last Saturday than we had been on in years because we were there waiting. There was nothing else to do. And we we really took advantage of fast pass. How many steps did you log? <laughs> oh my gosh, we did over 22,000 <laughs> 22, steps that day. Just walking around is kind of funny. Uh, yeah. Anyway, What's interesting about this right now, and once again, this is going to change and be very fluid, but so many people are there to ride that attraction, locals, right? A lot of annual pass holders, uh, that if you if they if people had gotten a high boarding group or if uh, they got a low boarding group, whatever it was, Disneyland looks at the beginning of the day like it's going to be a nightmare packed day, but most people just leave. So it's like packed there in the beginning. People get what they either decide they're going to go on it or they're not going to go on it, or they're going to come back and go on it later. And the park really thinned out. It was kind of wild. Now, you know, it's off season now. It's February anyway. So it's not. Can I ask, super can I ask you a question? So yeah. um, you were tracking all this. So all those thousand plus people are there and, and people might leave and they don't like disengage from the app saying we're not going to do it today. Is that just to make the lines move faster or something? Or in other words, if like, you know, a hundred people say forget it and, you know, maybe. 50, 25 boarding pass spots are, you know, are, are taken. Do they know that or do they just wait well, to see if people don't show up? To, you, have to you know what I'm asking. asking. You to, yeah, you have to cancel your boarding app. And I always okay. do that with fast passes too. It's just... It's polite, right? Because you are taking someone's but spot. But people could choose not to do that. They could just yeah, leave. and then and then what would happen is, and this is why the 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 they will call the boarding queues, and you'll wonder how come sometimes it's really fast and sometimes it's really slow yeah. for the boarding groups. You have two hours once you your boarding group is called to get over to the attraction, so they give you time. So if you're you know if you are either out of the park and you would need to come back in or you're eating or you're on another attraction or you're doing something else, you get two hours to get back there. So uh, I think they have already figured out pretty quickly uh, okay. when they see a lot of people coming back over to it once their boarding group is called, whether or not they have to wait for the full boarding groups. I could not find or talk to anyone that could tell me how many people were in each boarding group. I'd be fascinated to know that. So mm -hmm. I could just kind of get an idea how many people are getting through this thing at a time. Uh, but the good thing about it is you can always watch your app for the boarding group. You actually will get a push notification when you're boarding group is actually called. So if you're not paying attention, it will it'll notify you that, hey, it's time to come on over. And then there are a little kiosk uh, put up all around Disneyland Park that has a you know a digital sign on it that will show you which boarding groups are actually okay. in time. So there's a lot of ways to find out. Uh, we were actually, our thought process going in was to, if we didn't want to uh, wait all day, we were going to go home and come back. But then we decided we were having a good time in the morning. We just stayed. We actually stayed all day. It was really, we had a really nice day at Disneyland. It was funny. It was a different experience because technically what we really were doing was waiting to go on that ride. I know, but you're having fun in the meantime. Right. But here's what, let me tell you a little about our experience going on. I'll, make, I'll try to make this quick. We knew we had to get there. And it, it, I kept my quote of the day was to, to I was kept telling Sweet Pea, we need to be in the gate by eight, in the gate by eight. That was the whole thing. Right. So I told her, I said, we need to get up at five o'clock. She said, you are out of your mind. I'm not getting up at five o'clock to go wait to go ride this ride. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> 
we said, okay, then, well, I'm going by myself. Because we don't get up and out of this house no later than six o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. We're going to be hosed. We're going to be hosed. Because I, totally. I know what it's been like. So we got to the Mickey and Friends parking structure about 20 after six. The line of cars was huge. I don't know. I think they opened that at six o'clock. crazy, man. Right. Okay. So we're in this huge line all the way out practically to Ball Road. If you're familiar with the area, you'll know what that means. It was a long thing. Although I got to say, parking... We got in, it probably took us a, a 45 to 50 minutes from the time we got to the parking deck to get parked and out of the car, okay. which sounds like a long time and it is, but it was efficient. It wasn't like everything was efficient. You know, the parking was, once we got into the structure itself, super efficient as always is the Disneyland. Yeah, there's people, you know, taking you right to your parking place. And then it was like, okay, by this time it's getting to be after seven o'clock and we had to be in the gate by eight. And you know, already there were thousands of people in the parking lot. So there was going to be a thousand people waiting for the, you know, outside of the park entrance. So we're like, oh, do we walk over there or do we wait to get on the tram? So we got downstairs to the tram area and I couldn't believe that there wasn't a huge queue there because, you know, it was just so many people were coming in at a time. They had it worked out plenty of trams security was smooth i got you know we got over to the tram really the tram operation was really smooth as well so i mean really it was a it was it could have been a horrible experience it wasn't at all the day we went it all went like clockwork we get off the tram and i have never seen so many people waiting to go to disneyland in my entire life it was packed the queues to get into the park were all the way back to the california adventure which i had actually read about but they actually circled back around and they were double backing amongst itself so you know i i we go to disneyland a lot used to work there i know how these things work i was doing the math in my head i'm like oh my god there's no way we're here at seven o'clock and we're still not going to get in by eight we're not going to be in the gate by eight this is going to be horrible so we got into one of the queues and then we noticed three lines all the way to the right hand side so here's another pro tip for you if you're staying at one of the Disneyland resorts, they have magic mornings. And what that means is you can go into the park at an hour early. So the gates all the way to the right-hand side of the plaza were for magic morning guests only. And those lines were much, much shorter than the other lines. Now, obviously, if we would have gotten in that line and got up to the front, we wouldn't have gotten in because we weren't a magic morning guest. But we noticed, and you have to really watch for this, that about 725, 730, those lines converted to normal entry lines. Mm -hmm. And we just happened to be on the queue that was right next to that. And we were watching up front. And at front, uh, on the by the turnstiles, it says entrance. And on those turnstiles, it said magic morning. Well, we saw them flip that from magic morning to entrance. And we scurried over to the other line. And oh my gosh, it made all the difference in the world. Wow. We met this couple that was standing uh, behind us that um, they were confused. They were asking, you know, is this, what is this line for? Because, you know, there are so many people and there, you know, there's a lot of cast members around to help you out, but not enough to answer everybody's questions. So it's a little bit, of, it's chaotic. I mean, it was chaotic. And you could see people starting to get really tense about the whole thing. And, you know, because they knew they had to be in the gate by eight. Anyway, the people we were standing behind, uh, that were standing behind us were from, I don't remember what city they were from, but it was Northern Canada. They had never been to Disneyland before and they had no idea that all this was going on and they were like what the hell is going on here so we had the greatest it's conversation like this here. yeah we had the greatest conversation <laughs> with them they had been there for three days so this was the last day and every day they had tried to get a boarding pass and they didn't ever, they never got oh. one to go so we got up to the front and by this time we we're standing in this line it was five minutes till eight and we hadn't gotten in yet and we had gotten there 20 after six for crying out loud so five minutes to, to eight um, we let them go in front of us because we thought, you know what, you guys are getting, a, we, if, you, if we don't get in by eight, you're getting in by eight. So uh, they were just awesome people. Uh, so they got in and we got in the park at probably four, three or four minutes before eight o'clock. So we were in, I had our app ready to go and there we go. So we boarding group uh, 89. So that's how you actually uh, do it. That's how early you have to get there now. There's a ton of blogs and information out there that people are giving updates on. I'll put some in the show notes. If you're going to go, want to go do this, you need to go do it and you need to be well prepared to be able to do it right. Because it'd be super disappointing if you're coming in from across the country to go do this and you weren't able to actually yeah. ride the ride. It really would be. And I know that, you know, the line at City Hall for people complaining uh, was, you know, 
know, practically out to the main entrance because I, I, and I get that. But also I get Disney's standpoint too. They're doing the best they can to get everybody on here in a, an efficient way. And, you know, sometimes it just- I think pro pro tip, out. wait a few months before you go to Disney to watch. I, to know, I would normally say that. I don't know when this is going to, I really don't know when this is going to- uh, Unbelievable, man. And, and, and when it does, you are going to have that situation where the line is two plus hours long over there. Yeah. Anyway- Let's just get on to the attraction for just a minute. You yeah, hello. I will not spoil the trans the 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 ride, but just know when your boarding group is called, which is super exciting. I mean, and the thing is so cool. Everyone is excited because this is something new and they've been waiting for it. It's Star Wars for crying out loud. So once you do get your boarding group called, you do have to wait a while in the queue. And the queue is really cool. You go, th it, it, the whole premise is here is you're on the, you're in the resistance camp and they are going to recruit you, you know, to battle against the, uh, the, the first order. And you're going down through the queue and you see a lot of props and things that would be first resistance, like, you know, fighter pirate pilot, um, you know, outfits and gear and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, we how asked. How long did you get when you queued well, up? How long? We asked, they said, this is what they said. And this cracked me up. Oh my God. It could be anywhere between 45 minutes and 90. <laughs> I'm like, 45 minutes and 90? That is a pretty huge gap there, you know, uh, to 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 give out to someone. It's like if you went to a restaurant and said, well, it could be 45 minutes or it could be an hour and a half, I think you might leave, right? So anyway, we, I, you know, we were prepared and we were going to do no matter what, it, you know, be there no matter what it was. What time do you get in the queue now? You've been there since, since 8 o'clock. Yeah, we've been there since, well, really, 6, 6 20. We've been in the park since 8 sure. o'clock. We knew we had a boarding group, you know. We got called, our boarding group call, got called around 6.30 at night. So yeah. that's where we were, you know, in that, that day, you know, that's where the boarding group was. So we got in the queue about 630. It was about 50 minutes, I would say, probably okay. from the time we got in and it, it moved really, really well. The queue is set up really, really uh, uh, efficiently. There's benches almost the whole entire way. So okay. you move a little bit and you'll stop for a couple of seconds, right? So you could take a little rest and sit down. I never sat down because I knew if I sat down, I wasn't getting back up again because I was tired. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, and, and like I said, everyone is excited about going. Uh, I won't, like I said, I'm not going to go into the spoilers of the ride, but I can, let me just tell you that you, they have been talking about how advanced from a technology standpoint, this attraction is, and it does not disappoint when it comes to what it, it delivers in technology. There is literally no theme park attraction that would, that is like this today. And maybe ever will be like this in the future. It's kind of broken up into a couple different parts. And this isn't giving away the the plot line here, but you, you know, you board a, a ship and, you know, it, it, you get in and out of things and you stand in additional queues throughout the experience. Mm -hmm. So the whole experience is from the time you actually get start getting debriefed, you know, Ren starts debriefing you about what your mission is going to be and how you're going to help out to the time you actually get off the ride is anywhere between probably 15 and 20 minutes. So it's, it's a long experience, but not, you're not on an actual attraction that entire time you are in different, uh, you know, holding pins and stuff along the way. Uh, and there's a lot of cast member interaction in this. Now galaxy's edge was, was made as an immersive experience. It's on the planet of Batu. You're in the Black Spire outpost. The cast members that work there are are trained to act like they live on Batu. Yeah. They speak a little different language. We talked a lot about this. And if you want to get a full rundown of Galaxy's Edge, I'll put a sh the show notes to our original uh, podcast on this way back when, where I go through everything in the land, so you can get a good lay of the land and what's going on there. But they're they are immersed. The whole idea is for you to be immersed into the situation where you like do you're not really there. And they do a really good job of that. Now, in the attraction, you know, the, the cast members there are playing different roles. They're playing resistance fighters, and they're also playing members of the First Order. And um, so you have that component part of it, too, which is, in concept, very, very cool. Um, we'll talk about how I feel about that as, as far as the, the, the reality of it a little bit later. So we got on the ride. So much of that attraction is a little mind blowing and jaw dropping. You are immersed into things that you probably, if you're a Star Wars fan, it's a dream because you've, you've wanted to be in that movie. And this, you this comes about as close as you will ever get to being fully feeling like you're a part of the Star Wars, uh, 
story, which I give them huge A plus on. So let's just jump to the, the end here, jump to the chase. We get off, the attractions winding down. By this time, you know what time is it? Eight o'clock? <laughs> you know, we've had a, we've been there for a long time. We got off the ride. You, you know, people are smiling. People are excited. Some people are, I mean, we saw someone crying. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a, there's a range of emotions. So Sweet and I didn't really say anything, right? We looked at each other. We were smiling and we got off the ride. We were walking a little bit and we was just kind of silent. We were walking through Batu. I said, well, so what did you think? And she goes, and my wife said, you know what? I am disappointed. And I told her that I felt exactly the same way. I just feel like the cast member interaction completely took us out of the experience. Um, and, and this is going to be different for everyone. Cause like I said, I really, I, I, my anticipation level, my expectation level was super high. They could do nothing seriously, but disappoint me. So that's the way I look at that going in. Mm -hmm. Now, Laura had no expectation and for her to go off that ride and say, you know what? That was really great. I appreciate what it was, uh, how they built it. I appreciate the technology. It was the, the sense that the whole thing was great. She just felt as though the story was lacking. And she also thought that the cast member interaction was just odd. Now, I mean, you know, kudos to them for training up the cast members and trying to do this anyway. But, they, you know, my God, these people aren't actors. There aren't actors. And they also, you know, you have such a wide range of different people that are going to be, you know, doing different that. Skill set. Yeah, it just, to me, it, it just didn't, it didn't send me. Now, will I go on that again? Absolutely. Is it something I need to run out and do this Saturday, get up at six o'clock in the morning and go do yeah. it? No. Is it something that I would wait an hour for? No. I, what Laura and I both said when we walked off of there, that this is no Pirates of the Caribbean to me, right? This is no Haunted Mansion, something that I could ride literally every time I go I, that mm -hmm. I just, uh, it just didn't have that feeling to, to me. And this is what I want to say. And this is my little editorial thing on this. Uh, I feel that way about Galaxy's Edge altogether. The Millennium Falcon ride is a really, really fun attraction. There's a new uh, hack that just got released last week. It's called Chewy Mode. It's like any game where you can find a little hack and it changes the way the game is done. It's called Chewy Mode where you can go in and do, if you do a certain sequence of stuff before the ride happens, Chewbacca yells at you the entire time. But you have to know what to do and it makes it more fun. It makes it a repeatable type of thing. You want to go on it again. But still, I just feel like Disney missed the mark on Star Wars in general. As I was waiting in that queue for this ride, I just thought to myself, you know what? I, I know this is going to be great. And it was. It's so hard to talk about this because it was really spectacular. But it just didn't give me the, I just didn't walk out of there with jubilation. I just didn't. It was it was really weird. Like, I don't, I feel like they tried to make this too immersive and there was no reason to do that. Star Wars is a 40 year experience at this point. Everybody has their own feelings about what Star Wars should be and what it is. And they resonate with different characters. And to lock this thing down into a place between episodes seven and eight, which is really where it is. Right. It I mean, Number nine came out. This actually isn't even number nine can't even be a part of this galaxy, right? It's 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 definitely set in the Kylo Ren, uh, you know, Ray uh, part of the story, and I think they just really did a disservice. I, I mean, find they that a little disappointing because for real fans like us that have been around forever, and even the young people who it's the it's the initial episodes which are really the. Um, I guess the middle ones, four, five, six, that, that to me are what Star Wars is. I just think and that, that. And that doesn't, that's not even really represented in, in, in Disney, is it? It's, it's more this latest, the, the latest yeah. adventures. Yeah, you know, I mean, here's the thing. In Tomorrowland Forever, you know, Darth Vader used to walk around and in, in, in the, the Darth Vader character and all of that was part of Star Tours. And and even over the last year, they started to kind of even change that up a little bit where, you know, it's Kylo Ren and the thing. And I'm not I'm not knocking any of the new stuff because it's great stuff, too. I just feel like from it, it, to be an armchair Imagineer for a moment um, that they could they in my opinion, they should have done Star Wars. Uh, Arian Star Wars, much more like Fantasyland, where the whole area is kind of themed in a way, 
but there's a lot of different attractions that are going to be about different properties, right? They could have had things with Darth Vader. They could have had Ewok stuff. They could have, I mean, they could have done so. They, and then what's missing here. And I, if you, if you're a fan or you read anything about this stuff, you know, the music isn't there. I mean, I love immersive experience. This, they did a great job with Cars Land. I understand that the world of Pandora right. in Walt Disney World is absolutely uh, fantastic. This is great, but I think they really missed their mark. I, wow. I just don't feel like it is the type of thing that for me anyway, it's a burning thing me to, you know, for me to run back there. You know, it's really not, I'm looking forward. I have some family coming out this summer. I'm looking forward to, to getting their uh, experience yeah, and yeah. what their thoughts are on the whole yeah. thing. I just think that they missed the mark with this and it's really disappointing. And I am not going to be surprised that over the years, over, you know, these years go by, this starts to morph a little bit uh, as a, as, a as they get on. feedback and so forth, you see what happens. But I mean, it's, here's the deal: it's hugely, it's hugely successful, right? Yeah. This ride is fantastic. But I was looking forward to not, couldn't wait to go back on it again, and I don't feel that way. Yeah, you know what's interesting is that I've experienced this through the years with numerous scenarios where you're so, you have so much anticipation, and to your point, your expectations are so high that it is almost the letdown can happen most of the time because you are expecting something to be just so amazing and then it doesn't meet your expectation and then it's it, this is what it feels like i'm hearing you say yeah, so, yeah, exactly. so it's not two thumbs up for you is it two it's, thumbs down or well, is it is it is it not, in the middle? Uh, <laughs> i can't say that it's thumbs down necessarily i just feel like they spent a whole ton of money and it could have been spent better so i'm going to give this I, I if i had to give this a uh, i'm going to give this two thumbs sideways boop uh on this particular attraction how about if it was one to five stars what, what's your star experience i would give it three stars wow okay, i know and it's, it it's, i hate to say it it really it bums me out right so maybe the next time i go on it i'll feel differently all but right. i i don't it, it, i i think altogether i'm well, i'm you putting just got the blow by blow folks on yeah. uh, whether or not you're gonna wait to do this or you know wait till it calms down a little bit or go through the 12 plus hour experience that the emersons went on to hey, experience this here's Here's a pro tip. Go over to Trader Sam's at the Disneyland Hotel because a couple of Mai Tais helps that 12 hours. <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> go a little bit more quickly. So Star Wars Galaxy's Edge has now been talked about on this podcast, never to be talked about again. Uh, okay, until next time. That's probably not true. <laughs> All right. May the force be with you. And also with you. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for another Wondering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This was episode 109. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, thank you for getting my being well. Well, uh, absolutely. We'll continue to work on that for sure. I will be. And I am uh, happy to have heard that I'm not in a huge hurry to go see. I want to go to Disney and, and California Adventure sometime this year. And maybe by the time I'm able to come out, we can go do that uh, for one of our wanderings and let's uh, plan the rest of our year tour. You know uh, what? You're different. The lines won't be so long and, and I can experience it and give you my feedback. And I'm telling you, you're going to, there's so much of that you're going to enjoy and you're going to be blown away by. So, well, you know, that's just see, even just walking around, even if you can't get on the, the actual right. uh, rides, maybe just going in there and seeing it would be cool because I've seen some of the pictures and that would be fun. Hey, I have a story to tell regarding uh, apps, calming apps for well being. It's really funny. I, do, are you a gamer? Do you play games on your phone? Uh, I do a few. I'm actually playing many games with my six and a half year old uh, great nephew. That uh, okay. that he teaches me how to play, like, and they're building games like Roblox and Minecraft and things like that. Well, I, I have to blame you for getting me started in this because there's that game Flow that you you oh, yeah. uh, actually we play that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. so I, that's on the app, and I don't pay to have the ads taken away. Uh, so every once in a while, an ad will come up, right? Or to get more coins or something, sometimes you need to get a, depending on what game you're playing, you need to watch an ad or something. I found this to be really humorous, and this was really really good on the app Calm that you were talking about. I was laying in bed one night uh, and on my phone, which you should never do, and I was playing that game, and an ad for the Calm app came up, and it said, have trouble sleeping? Thank Tell you. Oh we're, my God. we're gonna talk in a future episode of uh, how, well, I had a recent conversation with someone to that point, 
of how the technology and the AI is happening so quickly with the data that's being gathered from our phones, and this right. is why I don't want to get one of those Alexa devices or anything, but I just had chatted with people who said, I was literally just, we just remember the other day, we yeah. were here, but I have had a conversation numerous times in a week in training classes about, I'm just talking about something and an ad will start showing up. I haven't gone online. I understand if you go online and I understand Facebook pixels and retargeting ads, I teach that, but to just say something. And uh, now I think uh, one of our agents, David, was pulling my leg, but I don't know. He was like, I was just thinking about something and I started seeing ads for it. I'm like, okay, that's a little scary, but we probably need to talk about this in the, in the future, in the coming Okay, episode. I'm going to tell you something. You, I thought he was joking. When, he, when you said it was a Toyota Tundra, I yeah. thought he was joking and said, yeah, that's what it was. No, you continued to talk to the new agent and he came over and he showed me on his phone that that's exactly the car that he was looking at and talking about. It's kind of funny, huh? Kind of cool. All right, so you, you're like Siri. It's all, yeah, apparently. Apparently Siri is becoming me. But uh, my Siri that's on speaks in a in a uh, an Irish accent. Which I kind Mine's of... British. I call him Alfred. Okay, Alfred. Okay, very good. All right, that wraps up uh, a long episode of the yeah. WBNL podcast. Sorry. But my God, it was compelling information. Uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, you're going to want to... Well, I don't know. I, I guess everybody gets to have an opinion, but man, I I really appreciate the details that you gave us on on and the pro tips on how to make that happen. And it, it, it maybe it's going to be like that for a while, but I bet it'll be better as time goes by and people, all the input people that want to go see it see it. I still want to go do it. So, so uh, we'll be doing absolutely. It in the future. So, all right, everybody, we'll see you in the next episode of the Wandering but Not Lost podcast. Yeah, and be forever wandering but not lost. <laughs>